This is the first in the series of uh, uh, the building of uh, the Grasshopper Skeleton Clock by uh, W.R. Smith. Uh, if, if you've been on my site before, uh, you do know that I've made the wheels and the pinions and uh, a few of the other parts uh, kind of separately. Uh, because at that time I w didn't know whether or not I was going to uh, build the whole clock on YouTube or not. And um, I have decided that, yeah, that's something that I'd like to do. So I'll be using this book a lot, and I'll be referring to it. Uh, but this issue, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to work... I built the frames. These are the frames for the clock. And you can see that they're pinned. They have, they have two register pins in them, and they come out like this. So that you can see the back and the front plate. And uh, so I'll show you how I made them. And um, you'll see these are not polished. Uh, they are wet sanded to 600 uh, because there's going to be holes put in them and, and there's a lot of work that's going to happen to them. And uh, that's why the register pins so that they fit together. Uh, and uh, so that's what we're going to do today on this video. And uh, over here, let me show you what I got over here. This is a uh, a, a mechanical Ori that I built. It's uh, Ferguson's uh, Mechanical Paradox Ori. And I built it about 10 years ago. And uh, in the end, I'm going to uh, 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 talk to you a little bit about it and uh, explain what's going on. But that we'll do that in the closing. Uh, but... Uh, We'll be looking at Ferguson's Ori at the end as well. All right, so let's go ahead down to the shop and get started on uh, uh, making these frames. Tape hinge on here, and uh, I'm going to use uh, 3M Super 77 uh, spray glue. Uh, I've used it on other templates for other clocks that I've built, and it works really well. I like it. All right, so now it's tacked up enough. Oh, damn, it didn't quite go the way I wanted. Let's get that masking tape out of the way. Uh. All right. Yeah, okay. All right. Yep, no damage. This is looking okay. Yeah, that's okay. Let's put the roller on that. Yeah, best laid plans. Huh? That didn't quite go the way I wanted, but we, we saved it. It's okay. I've clamped the two plates together, and uh, now we're going to use this uh, wobbler. I've got it on the mill. We're going to drill three holes where the uh, pillars are going to go, but for right now we're just going to... Uh, uh, Tap, drill and tap them for a uh, bolt to hold the plates together while we shape the edges. So the uh, first step here is to make sure we're right on the center line. And a little center drill tap here just to keep us uh, right where we need to be. And this is the drill uh, size for the uh, tap that we're going to be using on the back plate. For the bolt. And we'll tap all four holes on. We got just the back plate down now. And we'll tap all four holes down. The front plate now, and we're just reaming a little hole in there, uh, opening it up uh, so that we can put that bolt in there. There you can see the bolt. And uh, now I'm putting, uh, I've just put a little uh, center drill in there, but now I'm uh, running it through with a small, we're going to be putting a, uh, uh, a pin in there. I'm using a five-sided clockmaker's brooch. Uh, normally you just use these on small bushings. Uh, these two thick plates with this five-sided brooch is uh, taking a little bit of time. Um, but I've already done all the work. Uh, I'm just finishing the holes off here now, pretty much just for the camera. But uh, let me get them in here and... Uh, We'll pop that pin in there. Yeah, okay, and I got my finger on the bottom here. I can feel it going through, so that's a good, good fit. And we'll just go finish the other hole off down there. So these will be our uh, our uh, alignment pins. Give it a 
couple of twirls in here. Finish it off. Alright, put these pins in here and then I'll clip them and uh, a couple of taps to hold them in place. But let's get a look at them. There you go. Yeah, my bandsaw has a fairly good uh, size blade, so it pretty much just cuts in a straight line. Uh, and of course, it needs a new blade, and I just ordered the blade. And it'll probably get here by the time I'm done. Now we're going to do a little chain drilling. But before we do, I want to set the, uh, the drill bit up with a zero rake. So we use this uh, little stone here, and just behind the cutting edge there, just a couple of passes to shine it up a little bit, and that will give you a zero rake, and that way the brass, uh, which has a tendency to grab when you drill it, uh, and that will stop it from grabbing, because uh, we're going to be drilling a lot of holes. A lot of to chain drill. I don't get real fancy with it. I just kind of uh, freehand it. I used to. <laughs> I, I, I used to uh, uh, punch holes and then use a center drill. And, and I've kind of gotten away from that lately. Die filer will do the interior holes. And a piercing saw here. Uh, this thick plate, so this piercing saw is uh, uh, not the best. I, well, I have to use it here, uh, but I think the bigger holes I, I'll go over to uh, a scroll saw. And there's a number, uh, a zero zero triangular file, just opening up the hole a little bit. These are bigger. 
but I'm just opening the hole big enough so that I can get the die filer in there uh, and use the die filer to bring it to the line. So once again, just connecting dots here. And now it's opened up. This is my rough uh, file. Now if you want to see more on this die filer, I have a video out. It's called uh, the All-American Die Filer. And uh, I bought it as rusty junk and, uh, and uh, reconditioned it. And I got it at auction quite a few years ago. I got about 15 different blades for it. And I changed the blades quite a bit process of doing these plates. This is a piece of one inch tool steel, water hardening tool steel. We're going to make a couple sanding buttons. Face it off and then we'll drill center drill it for a quarter inch hole for the bolt. Check it with a file just to make sure yeah, it's like glass. Yep, no problem. Let's install those. And now these will these will give a nice uh, uh, round to the uh, bottom parts here, and it'll keep you uh, keep you right on the when you're using the die filer. This is a knife file. That'll get me right into the corner there. We're we'll bringing it right down to the line. It takes a while, uh, but you got much better control over it with the die filer than with the sander. Uh, at least I do. Anyway. Alright, so now we have, we're holding it in the vise, and uh, with the, I got rubber jaws in there, and we're draw filing now. And I, once again, I start with a zero, an aught, an aught file, and uh, a six incher. This is, I'm, I'm using a six inch. Then I'll go all the way down, probably as much as a number four. Uh, file, much smaller file as I get it uh, the way I want it. Yeah, I've already, you can see I've uh, damaged the template a little bit with the jaws. See that little mark there? That's what we're getting out of there, that little mark. So I'm doing this in real time so you get an idea of uh, what it's like to get a little mark like that out. You gotta work the whole area. There it's starting to go now. There. 
So that's kind of what draw filing is. Now these arms on the plate, on the back plate, I've separated the plates and this is the back plate. Uh, these arms uh, hold the uh, face on the clock, so they're not necessary uh, except on the front plate. So we're cutting them off the back plate right now. back to draw filing again. Use a six inch flat file here, ought cut. Now after all the draw filing we I do a little sanding. I start with 220. I'm going to take it all the way to 600. Um, but when I finish the project and I'm getting the plates ready, I'll go all the way to 2400. But for right now, 600 is plenty good. When I work on an area, I take it all the way from 220 to 600 before I move on to the next one. And I try to, I have to get it so that the light is hitting it from different angles uh, so I see exactly what I'm doing. You can feel a lot of it with your finger when you run your finger over it at the end. But I need to move them around to see what's going on. And I also have a, a magnifying uh, loop right up top here. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, little ins and outs. The filing takes a while. I mean, the sandpaper work. Well, the filing and the sandpaper work take a while. But, you know, if you got your area set up and you got your chair, it's not that bad. It just it goes on. So I'm all finished with the sanding of the edges. Now that when you that draw filing and sanding kind of brings up the edge on these plates. So uh, 600 grit wet wet sanding takes that edge off from the draw filing and the sanding. And uh, just a real quick.
gives you a chance to look at them too. anymore so we're reaming out the threads uh, so next step after this is to make the uh, uh, the pillars and the feet so I'm uh, using a reamer and uh, taking the threads away and this is the last step for this uh, for part one of the grasshopper clock Alright, so we're back upstairs in the office and the plates are done. Uh, they're not polished or anything like that, but there's a lot of work that's going to be happening to them in the next few episodes. But the very next episode on the grasshopper clop, we're going to build four feet that will come down like this from the four uh, uh, areas there. And we will build the uh, three posts or, or pillars that go in between the two plates. And uh, that will be in episode two. And uh, before I go, I thought I'd show you a book I've got in my library on skeleton clocks. And uh, this is kind of a history of skeleton clocks. It doesn't tell you how to make them or anything like that. Uh, but I use it because I like to see the different shapes and stuff that they've done. And how they build their uh, pillars and their feet. Um, just looking for uh, interesting uh, uh, ways of doing it. Uh, but this is a pretty typical English uh, uh, layout for a clock. All the pictures in here are in black and white uh, but th these are like the tower type and I mean this is a very uh, common approach to a uh, but some of these are so complicated that you'd be just a year just building here's an English type here and on the next page, I believe it's the next page. No, it's not the next page. Well, maybe it is. Anyway. Ah, this one here. I mean, that very simple one that I just made. Can you imagine? That's the back of the plate there. Can you imagine the work that went into these skeleton clocks? Uh, there'd be a, a, just a year's worth of work making the, uh, the plates. Uh, but anyway, it's a, a book uh, on skeleton clocks by uh, F.B. Royer and uh, just a bunch of pictures. So let me go ahead on and uh, talk a little bit about Ferguson's Ori. Uh, I built this about 10 years ago and uh, I uh, had just finished making a CNC router and I could do all this uh, engraving on this uh, r this uh, calendar ring with the CNC machine that I built. So uh, starting tomorrow I'm going to take this apart. It's been 10 years. It's been sitting on my bar. I've bored a bunch of people about stories of how uh, Ferguson's mechanical paradox already works. Um, so I'm going to tear it down, clean it, and my wife uh, bought me a uh, uh, an, a display cabinet for my Ori's. So it has three layers, and the top layer is Ferguson's Ori, and then I built a Copernicus Ori, which is in the second layer, and then I have my sextant and some navigation equipment on the bottom layer. Uh, so I thought I'd share that with you. And uh, so starting tomorrow, I'm going to take this apart. And uh, I was just looking at it earlier, and I don't even remember how I put it together. So it could be fun, uh, but I'm going to take it apart and try to explain to you what it does and everything. It's a really interesting set of gears. You guys, uh, you gearheads, uh, there you go. The uh, mechanical 
this this gear drives these three gears in three different directions and that's the mechanical paradox and uh, I hope in the next two weeks I'll have that one out and uh, I'll be able to show it to you and share it to you uh, thanks a lot for watching and uh, I hope you'll come back and see Ferguson's Ori in the next chapter on the grasshopper clock thanks a lot bye now